Hi everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. As the conversation around sustainability and mental health is playing more and more of a part in beauty over the past couple of years, I am here today with hairstylist and founder of Archive, Adam Reed, to discuss all things mental health and sustainability in hair care. Thanks so much for joining us, Adam. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. Honestly, it's a pleasure. Oh, okay. So today I want to talk, as I've already said, a bit about <laughs> mental health and sustainability because yeah. you obviously launched your brand in the past year um, and it's a real champion for those things that take the basics of hair care much broad make it a much broader topic so let's just start by talking about what the hair industry and hair care means to you beyond just being a job so i one thing that's really interesting is i'm, I'm a, first and foremost i'm a hairdresser and i i love being a hairdresser i have always worked in the salon i've always had a seat in a salon so I've always kept my feet on the ground which I ab absolutely love it's one of my favorite parts of my job and of course I do all of the other creative stuff I I am a brand ambassador I'm a I've been a session stylist I've done shows I do the tv when I moved to London sort of 30 years ago I wanted to be that hairdresser that did a bit of everything and that's what I wanted to do now, I have always been very open about my own struggles with my, I call it mental fitness. I'm trying to find a really good way of making it a positive thing. And I used to call it my ill mental health. But actually, what I struggled with was how to manage my mental fitness. And, um, you know, I've always been open about that. But as social media started to hit and uh, as media changed, I started to see how it was affecting more and more people. Um, interestingly, I, uh, my husband and I adopted our son nearly six years ago. And there were elements of when I grew up and my grandmother and my mom and my sisters of things that we used to do with each other, our, our weekly hair wash, our head massages, brushing hair, all of these little things. And of course, everybody who knows me knows I love a fragrance and, and I started to realize when we adopted um, Riley, these things really connected to a bonding experience. Mm. Then over the last couple of years, we've seen these changes. And interestingly, you know, I don't like to talk about it, but three years ago, the world changed. And, and, and in those first couple of months, everybody was concerned about people doing their hair at home, using colors on their hair and cutting their hair. And then as we went back to salons and then went back home, in the, the second time we were made to stay at home, what people were talking about and how I saw the conversation change, we as hairdressers and as pros were saying, actually, do you know what? If it's making you feel better, you do it. You do what you need to do. We'll help you after that. But if it's making you feel better, you do it. And actually what I started to realize, you know, I do love being a creative. I do love the opportunities that I get to be a creative hairdresser. But what I realized myself and that my clients and customers and, you know, the hairdressing community as a whole, what we were missing was the conversation, the ability to talk, the safe space of a salon chair. And I, I was very open about the fact that in those times that we were made to stay at home, I had an episode called disassociative amnesia. I lost my mind um, and I woke up in hospital and um, it was a little bit of a wake up call. But do you know what was amazing was when I came, when I got back home, my son um, reminded me of those things. He ran me a bath. He wanted to wash my hair. He kept bringing me bottles of, of aftershave in to wear. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this, this little boy who came to us, this change in the planet, these, what we're seeing here is the importance of a salon uh, safe space. Mm. And I coined it head care at the time because my thinking was, I look after what's on here. 
But actually what I started to realize was unofficially I helped to look after what goes on in here. Yeah. And I thought, okay, do you know what? There are lots of people changing the way we see a, a hair and a beauty experience. But I knew that that gave me a purpose. I'm a product junkie. I love product. I'll never not love product. I love skincare. I love home care. I love perfume. I love toothpaste. Um, <laughs> I, I literally love product. So I was like, do you know what? This is going to give me an opportunity to change what we do in the salon. And, and I opened four weeks before the world shut down. And yeah. we realized that we, you know, we were asking and giving nurses and doctors the opportunity to come and get their hair washed at the end of their shift. And we saw this incredible conversation starting to open up. And sometimes actually, of course, we always want to look pretty and we want to follow trends, but sometimes just washing your hair is all you need to do. There's something so incredibly therapeutic about cleaning, about washing everything away, a head massage, a head brush. I always say, if all you can do is wash your hair, brush your teeth, there's something so incredibly amazing about brushing your teeth and yeah. your mouth feeling clean. I don't put lipstick on, but I do paint my nails. So I always say a swipe of lipstick or a bit of nail polish and then a yeah. waft of fragrance. Actually, that can be head care. And I think and that, you know, we've always done this. We always have these amazing conversations, but giving our clients and our customers the ability to save space, their chair, to feel comfortable. You know, we have a station in the salon where there are no mirrors. So if you're sat, you can just sit, you can do your work, you can have your color pot yeah. on, um, and, and you don't have to sit looking in front of a mirror. We have a perfume wall. We encourage people to switch up their tech. We have um, silent appointments where you don't need to talk. Um, then we have open conversation appointments where actually we'll listen and we're really building this much bigger head care community. But I really believe in the little things making a massive, massive difference. And I think that's where that really nice crossover hits. Yeah, 100%. And it's also, I think this is why hair care is so important to people as individuals, as, you know, customers, is because it has this like synesthetic thing to it. It's like you say, it's the sense, it's the the texture, just the action yeah. of doing something that just makes someone feel so much better and it doesn't I think over the past few years we've been taking this really prescriptive science-led element to beauty which I think is really important too but I absolutely agree really suck, sometimes it can really suck the joy out of things particularly if people are left to feel alienated by it if they don't understand it because you shouldn't have to understand it really Oh, so true. And again, you know, my whole thing is based around prevention. So I am very much like you don't need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of products. Mm. I've, cre I've created a range called Archive. Archive is Adam Riley Kenny. So that's my husband, my son and myself is the arc. And then the archive is sort of what goes on and what's gone on in this head. Yeah. But I've created that. So actually, there'll never be hundreds of products, but the performance, the formulations are amazing. So if you like something a little more tech, you can bring this into your hair care wardrobe. And I think that's mm -hmm. happening across the board in beauty. There are incredible products on the high street. There are incredible products if you want to invest a little more. There mm -hmm. are amazing holistic products. All of these things, again, you talked about a synergy earlier. All of these things create this amazing synergy that just helps you on a day-to-day -day basis take away the tech of it all Look at the basic, you know, the, the the rituals of what you're doing and just take that time to enjoy them and to shut down, light a lovely candle, put your favourite music on and, and, and use that time to care for your head. Yeah, definitely. And also it would be remiss not to talk about um, sustainability, particularly when it comes to archive. Um, when it comes to sustainability in hair, it's a massive, massive topic beyond just, you know, in comparison to skincare where we brands are really focusing on things like packaging and yeah. 
ingredient growing and everything else that comes along with it. Whereas hair is a much bigger picture because you have the service element to it as well. What do Absolutely. you? Absolutely. What did you find when you did launch hair, uh, when you launched Archive and Headcare as a whole? What did you take away from that in terms of sustainability? And where do you think the industry could be doing differently? Well, do you know, Shannon, it's a really interesting thing because I think the big myth here is that it's really difficult to be sustainable mm -hmm. and it's really complicated. So I am really lucky. I have a role at L'Oreal Professional and I have a role within the Green Salon Collective, both amazing pioneers in, in advancement in our industry. Mm. But a Green Salon Collective is incredible for what we can do on a day-to-day -day in the salon. So we have everything taken away that can be taken away. Hair, so the hair is taken, it can be used to compost, um, they'll give you tips on what hair can be used for. It's made into booms that help to soak up oil in oil spills. And again, these tiny, tiny pieces of knowledge make a, a much bigger, bigger picture. We have our colour removed. So all of our excess colour is put into a container and that's taken away so it's not polluting our waters um you know the, the the tiniest little things coffee grains where your products come from where they are going after then with the l'oreal professional i worked with the net zero salon project and yeah. honestly that was a game changer everybody can do this every salon owner can look into this and they come in and they assess the sustainability impact on your salon. And honestly, that was a game changer. How much water you use, what heat your your um, heaters are set to, yeah. your what coffee you use, what milk you use, the fact that yeah. using an, uh, a milk alternative can make a huge change. Again, with Archive, what I wanted to do was look at, you know, it's a universal product. So actually I've designed it for every head in mind. Mm. So anybody in your family can use it. It's not designed for gender, hair type, uh, your age. It's designed for your head and your hair. Yeah. So again, this allows that you don't have to consume so much. We put it into pump bottles for easy use. Even our minis are in pumps so you can reuse them. And we've mm. used post-consumer recycled plastic where we can. We're also B Corp, which really allows us to know what's going on. And do you know what, Shannon? I think going back to my point at the beginning, information is key. And actually, head care, sustainability, looking after your team as much as your client. Mm -hmm. You know, my team are the most important thing to me. If my team are happy, my clients are happy. Yeah. Um, and it, it's those little things making a big difference. And I keep saying that. But that's key to all of this. I think we, we're, we're so bombarded by information that you don't know what to take in and when to take it in and how to keep it in your head, that actually keep it nice and simple, streamline everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Net Zero Salon Project, Green Salon Collective, our archive. I look at other product ranges, Flamingo Estate I was looking at, an incredible mm -hmm. Um, American range that I'm literally trying to bring into the salon <laughs> as a part of my curate. But, um, you know, there's then amazing hair care ranges like Scented and yeah. um, these incredible brands, Aromatherapy Associates, you know, learn how to do that. Annie de Malmiao, de Malmiao Skincare. It's one of those products that I just love the smell of. Fragrance, so if, if I'm feeling a little low, Calvin Klein obsession wafted all over me. Yeah. If I'm feeling a little bit more sort of lively, portrait of a lady has to be portrait of a lady for me. I, I really overdose on that. And then I get compliments all day long. I, yeah. People people love it. And again, that's all head care. And it's yeah. all the little things that we can do to make that bigger difference. And as I said, a good brush of the teeth really, really helps to lift your spirits. Those tiny little things. My grandmother used to say to me, Brushing your hair a hundred strokes a day is really nice. And she used to do it for me. Now that could be an old wives tale, but you have thousands and thousands of receptors on your head that really help you relax. So brushing your hair, a double brush, 
use a, a mason piercer or a manta brush or a tangle teaser get that through your hair and they are yeah. absolutely brilliant as a part of a head care regime definitely honestly I'm whacking Adam, them all in there I flowers could... nice smell <laughs> I could talk to you. We could do a whole TED talk on this, honestly. We really could, because it is the simplicity of it. I honestly was nervous about it at the beginning. But honestly, it's really, really easy to take those tiny little things and make a big difference. Yeah. And I think that's what we do within the beauty industry so well. And also, do you know what? The, the community, the beauty community is so strong at the moment you know i i ring up josh wood or i'll ring up sally brooks and i ring up other hairdressers and my my sort of beauty community and i ask what they're doing and what they're up to and it's it, it's amazing how we can then share that and make social media a really positive place and yeah. and a really exciting place to visit something that we shouldn't be worried about we shouldn't feel like it's an anxiety inducing Actually, it gives us that little bit of a smile and that, that real kick up the backside to get on. Definitely. Thank you so much for joining the us. We could talk for hours, but we mine. don't have hours. <laughs> we don't have hours. but And as you know, I could talk for hours, but the pleasure is all mine. And, and congratulations to all of the winners at today's awards. Honestly, thank you so much for joining us, Adam. And I hope Pleasure. you guys enjoy the rest of the awards. Thanks so much for tuning in.